wants to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life. So you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ. Welcome to a dynamic and life transforming program impacting generations with the Word of God. Christ has been made our wisdom. He's Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. He's not just the power without the wisdom. And it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power. Because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. When we talk about Christmas, when we talk about this festive season, people send messages to each other. Happy festive season. But what is the festivity of this season? When we tell our people Merry Christmas, what do we mean? We wish you a happy Christmas or Christ. Mass. What do we mean? Um, recently, I was watching a Christmas movie on television. Very wonderful movie by, by plot and setting. The narrative and story was just so great. Um, but then in there, something pricked my heart because I have noticed over the years more and more movies or films are being produced in the world from Hollywood and everywhere across the world concerning Christmas. And different stories and settings are placed in the season. Um, if you ask the general number of people, what is Christmas? Oh, so Christmas is a season where, you know, we get together with family. It's a season where we go to the village or we fly over to our uh, best friends and closest relatives and we celebrate that season with them. But what is that season? And the Spirit of the Lord impressed it on my heart that every other day we're losing the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of this season, the true meaning of why our fathers of old set this day for us. And they said, I think let's set a time in human history every year just to remember this wonderful and gracious gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, what we see are forms, ideas, traditions, and artifacts that define the season. We have Santa Claus. We have elves. We have reindeers. Uh, we have... Christmas trees, we put balloons in our houses, and all things, all these things that we do and celeb to celebrate. We do carols and many other things that we do in celebration of this season. And the God that we're celebrating is a God who dwells in secret. Is a God who dwells in secret. In other words, to understand him is to get the experience of unveiling apocalypsis that he will be revealed to you so you know who exactly you worship and celebrate this season. There are many people tonight who are going to drink themselves, you know, to disease or death. There are people tonight that are going to do all sorts of things, all sorts of evil in the world in the name of celebrating a season and a God that they do not know. Not many people have had the opportunity to understand why God allowed us to create a time and season when we will remember the person of Jesus Christ and his birth to us. Because not many have the idea of what Jesus came to do. Some, they have a vague idea because our God dwells in secret. And if you look through uh, biblical history, you see he's not the God who so much reveals himself directly uh, to men, but indirectly because he's a God of secret things. You look at how the King of Kings, the irony of the King of Kings, the Lord of, all, of Lords, the one which was present at creation, being born in a manger, whose parents that night were looking for an inn and there was no place to lay this boy. 
And, and that is the king of glory. We expected him to be born in a palace. We expected him to be born in one of the most affluent places of human uh, habitation. But God chose to come in all that humility. And the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the man we celebrate today, was born next to animals. In places human beings cannot live. He is the God who appears in the least expected places and through the least expected people. And that is why I believe for many he has stayed veiled. And even when they try to celebrate this season, in the things in which we define for the world, he is actually not in it. He's actually not in it. There is no elf in, in the Bible. I'm sorry if your children are watching, but there's no Santa Claus in the Bible. And no reindeers. It's, it's a tradition, and they're okay when you're dealing with, you know, a certain age of people. But maybe, just maybe, we owe it to even our children to know the truth from the time they're little. When I was a young boy, my parents told me that there was a tooth fairy. And this tooth fairy used to come when you remove your tooth and you keep it somewhere. The tooth fairy would come and give you money. And so you remove a tooth, you put it under, and next day you have a money. Why? Because I believe they sought to motivate us. Much as it was healthy compromise in the mind of meditating, I mean, of motivating us as children. When we grew up, we realized that there were no tooth fairies. There were no tooth fairies. And I told myself that when my children grow up, I'll tell them the truth and tell them for every tooth you remove, I'll give you money. Because we're living in a generation that through compromises that are becoming unhealthy, we are planting seeds of deception and falsehood and creating ideas in the hearts of people of things that don't exist because it's okay for us to motivate them. It's okay for us to provide for their ignorance while we let them grow and learn. But we do not know that in its very form, we're actually building the foundation of deception. And some of them grow up in these traditions and ways of life and the many things that are attached to us as we grow. And no wonder sometimes when we grow up, not many are able to discern the truth. Because many things, even that are not true and biblical, have been put in this word. And I mean, have been put in, this, in these seasons and these days in our Christian celebrations, like you're talking about Easter. And, and you have Easter bunnies and you have Easter eggs and... And some of these things, if you go back in ancient history, though some of them unfortunately were demonic. And, and that's the hard truth that not many people are able to hear. But again, it's the truth that makes us free. These were gods of fertility with Anglo-Saxon gods of long ago. And the goddess was a story. And so people call it Easter, but really it's actually a resurrection Sunday of how these names come in and we start to even have traditions of pagan gods within our worship. And we do not know that our God is a jealous God. He intends not to share glory with any other. How much do you think he's able to tolerate because you give him the impression that you want to worship him the right way? But he says, but them that worship me, the Bible says they must worship me in spirit and in truth. For they are they which God seeks. God is seeking for men which can worship him in spirit and in truth. And so we're talking about Christmas. I'm not against, you know, what the world calls Santa Claus. Let them call it. You know, yeah, that he brings gifts for children at night. <laughs> but these children grow up and get to know the truth. Again, I'm sorry if you're seated with your family and they're listening. The truth makes us free. The truth makes us free. So we can do many of these things 
But do we really know who Jesus Christ is? Do we really know the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ? And I think that the world has to invest more time in revealing this God that seems hidden from mankind. Look at how he was born. Look at the woman who begat him. The scriptures speak of Joseph. He is seeking a relationship with this young woman, which woman is known as a virgin because it was a godly thing for a child, for a, a girl, to keep herself to the day of marriage. And she's pregnant. Now, what people don't see, what, what, sometimes when we read the story, we see Mary and Joseph, but step out of Mary and Joseph and imagine Mary in that crowded village of women who talk of crazy aunties, of gossipers, of slanderers. And I see her walking three months pregnant. And they're like, hmm. we thought she was a virgin. Hmm. We thought she was holy. Who is the father of that child? That even the man called in destiny to handle that responsibility. The Bible says being a just man because it was so shameful for a girl to conceive outside wedlock in that culture, he, because he was a just man, he wanted to lead an example and wanted to put her away privately, secretly, without people knowing. And then one day they asked him what happened. Oh, no, 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 it didn't work out. Let's just say Joseph had not gone on with Mary. The plan of God would not still fail. Imagine if Mary was six months pregnant and people are still saying, who is the father of that child? I can imagine how much shame that woman carried in that time. But in there was hidden the greatest gift of humanity. Again, he is the God who does. He, he, he has a way of coming through the things that are least expected. And here's a deeper mystery again of the same woman. In the Egyptian language, Mary or Maria means love. Beloved, love in its own, as Mariam. But in the Hebrew, Mary means rebellion. Now I want you to follow this. Mary or Mariam means rebellion. And so to what the fallen world will define as love, to God it is still rebellion because it's not yet changed or transformed. I don't know that you're following what I'm saying. To what the world, because Egypt in scripture represents the fallen world. Children of Israel were crossing, were coming from a fallen world into the promised land. So Egypt, Babylon all represent the fallen world in scripture, not physically, not that present Egypt is fallen, but we're talking using metaphors. So we see Egypt, we see the place of slavery, we see the place of the fallen world defining her as one which is loved. And yet we see the mind of God and the sacred language defining the same as rebellious. Because sometimes even what the world defines as the highest realm of form of love can actually be rebellion to God because no man can know God and not know love and no man can assume to define love in the fallen world when they do not know God. For the Bible says that he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. Why is it to God in the sacred language rebellion? Because they seek to define a love in which God is not. They seek to define a love that is not connected to divinity and the way of salvation. And so to them, what is beloved? To, get, to God, it's a board as rebellion because it is not yet transformed to a certain nature. And she has to carry that through a womb. 
And, and the Hebrew word for womb is love, the love that is expressed in compassion or mercy. And so we see what the world defines as love and in its own self because it's inferior, it is still rebellious to God because they seek to define a love without God. And so God gets into this thing defined as rebellious, yet is perfect, a chaste virgin among men. And in there, through compassion, love and mercy, he puts a seed. I don't know whether you're following. And that seed is Jesus Christ. And that seed is born of this woman. And the Bible says, and that child waxed, he grew in stature and in wisdom and favor towards God and man. And this particular seed, the, the realm, the demonstration of God's mercy and compassion in that which is rebellious because it beholds a love that is without God, he, he, through that compassion and mercy, he begets a seed that knoweth not sin. Because in its own, it is one with God, which is love. He is the God who puts compassion and mercy and love because it's the only way he will draw man. It's the only way he will draw humanity in its deepest rebellion to the true righteousness and glory of that calling of the new creation. I want you to understand what Christmas is. Why Jesus came. Why Jesus came. Again, I see the God of the secret things. Because whoever knew that out of the identity of rebellion, compassion and mercy would bring out life. Compassion and mercy would express love. Whoever knew that out of what the, the, the Jewish language would call rebellion, God still could put love on the most perfect thing and, and, and save the world through it. Because again, as I said, he is not the God that appears in the most obvious things. And so that expression of love in our rebellion, in what we knew not as love and had our own definition of love, and so he translates us daily to understand him as love that love to us becomes a revelation and that revelation is god and he says if we do not have love if we do not walk in agape the very love which is of god we do not know god he just is not the expression of it he is the nature of it before the eminent expression and so jesus christ comes to us the Bible says that he, 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 he broke the dividing wall. There was a division for the Bible says sin separated us. It disturbed relations in humanity. And so there was a chasm, there was a division between humanity and God. There was a way the men of old in that covenant related with God. There was a place they could not get to except for those that were exclusively anointed by God as prophets, as priests or as kings or judges in that time. But otherwise, sin, the Bible says, disturbed relations with God and everyone. But the extent of that disturbance was not clear. The Bible says, until God spelled it out in detail to Moses. So in the abyss dealt, dwelt death because there were places that we could not be invited because of our fallen nature. Remember, man was banished from the Garden of Eden. And a, a judgment was sentenced on man because of the fall. And so when Jesus comes, the Bible says, he, he, he becomes our peace because he made both one and has broken down the middle wall, partitioning us between God. He has come to reconcile us back and to God. And the mystery of this expression through that love seeks that we would become one with God. That mystery, to think about it, that it is possible for a man with flesh and blood that pumps, you know, every day that this very own normal man can actually come in relationship with God and not just have a relationship, but become one with God. For thee that is joined with the Lord, the Bible says is one spirit with the Lord. And because of that, we don't only have a relationship, but we have a life because of that relationship. 
he had to become seen for us. He that knew no sin, he had to live a perfect life. That we being dead and two sins might live unto that righteousness that calls us accepted amongst the, 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 the beloved or the brethren. And so we are invited into a space of life, not only reconciliation, but oneness with the Father. Oneness with the Father. As he is, the Bible says, so are we. This is love made perfect. John says, this is love made perfect. This is agape made perfect. That we may have boldness on the day of judgment. In fact, the word there for judgment is crisis. That we might have boldness on the day of crisis. That in the time when you're in trouble, you'll carry a boldness. That the time when you feel pain in your body, you'll carry a boldness. That in the time when your finances are frustrated, you'll carry a boldness. That the time when your marriage is shaken, you'll carry a boldness. That the time when you receive a bad report about your relative, you'll carry a boldness. That the time when you are fired or you're disturbed from your career, you carry a boldness. The Bible says, because as he is, so are we in this world. So if they fire you, they fire Jesus, the maker of all things. How can he fail? How can you be sick? How can Jesus be sick? Jesus, the Bible says, was tempted in all things, but there was never a record that he succumbed to sickness. So that mean he didn't come. It only means it could not hold him because in him was light. You see that? In him was light. Jesus did not lack. He walks to a fig tree and it has no fruit because the Bible says it's not its time for figs and he curses it. Why? Because he's the son of God. He's hungry. I made you. How can I starve? The consciousness with which he lived this world and gave us an example. It was enough if only a man was born raised in this world and lived exactly like Jesus lived in the realm of glory and power with which he lived. But even better, he said, he did not say for as he, is, he was, so are you. He's not elevating the new creature to walk like Jesus walked in the surface of this earth. He was the sample, but he set even a greater and higher thing for the church. He says, greater things shall you do because I go to the Father. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so he raises a superior person because he's given a name above every name when he shakes hell and shakes them are not triumphing over all of them. He's given a name above every name that at the sound of that name, every knee bows of things in heaven and of the things in the earth and of things under earth and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He ascends and then gives gifts to men. He tells you, go be prophets, go be pastors, go be evangelists, go be teachers. He says, go heal the sick, go cast out devils, go raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, for lo, I'm with thee up till the end. But he still says, greater things shall you do because I go to the Father. Why? He has been exalted in a certain realm. And that's the realm with which John beholds and he says, huh? Huh. So this is love made perfect that we might have confidence on the day when crisis comes through because as he is, not as he was, as he is, not as he walked the surface of this earth thousands of years ago, but the Bible says, but as he is present tense, seated in heaven at the right hand of the father he says so are we in this world hallelujah glory to god he says so are we in this world what troubles jesus now it's what troubles us what cannot touch him cannot touch you what cannot frustrate him cannot frustrate him no no, no. put aside the traditions and ideas of men about this man Put aside what you think you know and what the world has told you about this man. Look at what the word of God says concerning this man. And this is the truth eternal. That now we are one with him. Christmas is that time when we remember where it began from. 
and that in all his humility, the Bible says he took him on himself the form of a servant, the likeness of a man. He, he, he took humility for God to, to, to come in the form of a servant. It took humility for God to come in the likeness of man. He was not supposed to come in the likeness of man. He was not supposed to come in the form of a servant. But it took humility for him to come as a servant. I don't know whether you see where I'm going. It took humility for him to come in the likeness of, a, of, of men. Now, if the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And behold, the old is past and now the new. And all things are... God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So our oneness with God takes great humility to walk as men. Because we're more than men. Our oneness with God takes great humility for us to be servants. Because we are more than servants. We are seated with Christ far above all principality and power. No devil, no spirit, no witchcraft, no, no, nothing. He says nothing. You are far. He didn't say you're just above. No, he says you're far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named cancer, every name HIV, every name poverty, every name that is named under the earth. Not only in this world or eon, but also in that which is to come. You're still above. You're above anything that would ever threaten humanity. So it's God. So he says, let this mind be in you as was in Christ who found it no robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form. He took a form of a servant and in the likeness of a man. He says, we, we are supposed to carry that mindset to carry the humility of appearing to men as though we are men, of appearing to men as though we are servants, but we actually are not. We're sons of the Most High. Glory to God. You're more than a man. The things that kill men won't kill you. The things that frustrate men will not frustrate you. The things that destroy men will not destroy you. The things that regress men will not regress you. The things that, 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 that uh, you know, dissuade men will not dissuade you. The things that men cannot, you know, uh, uh, hold, they cannot relate to the things that they cannot connect to. You can, why? Because you are above the nature of humanity that is weak. Yes, you still have a body. Yes, you still have a, a, eyes like them. No, but the Bible says, but even though you are among them, you are not of them. And don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You think when he said that a thousand will fall at one side, 10,000 will fall on the other. You think he didn't know Corona will come? He knew coronavirus would come. But he still said, uh-uh, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 on thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. He says you are a peculiar people. You, you're strange. You understand? That's just, you're strange. That's why that man, which is in Christ, he didn't call him a new man. He calls him a, a new creature or a new creation. And all of this happened because of this man called Jesus. What would we be without Jesus? You know, sometimes I wonder, I don't know that you do yourself, how do people live without Jesus? How do people breathe without Jesus? How can somebody put their faith in science? How can somebody put their faith in, 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 in human inventions? And the same men which are inventing are also dying of the same things. Our hope and faith is in Christ Jesus. He's a solid rock on which we stand. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he walks among men like a man, but he's more than a man. And then he comes and says, you know what? As the Father has sent me, 
in the exact way, not less, in the exact way the Father has sent me. He says, so send I thee to the world. So when we come to the world because of that man, we are exactly the way the Father sent him. We, as he, he was sent, so God has sent us. And now he is one with us. We are reconciled with him. If people understood what it means to be one with God, it does not matter what the doctor says in your blood. It does not matter what the world say is there to kill. It does not matter. There's that confident assurance that I know who I am. He came to make us live above men. Now we carry that consciousness every day. And that's the consciousness that every child must carry. That you are more. You are more than a man. It's the thing that you must invest your time and life to meditate into. That you are more than a man. And it all began by this one sacrifice, Jesus. Our children should know that more than they know Santa Claus. Our children should learn of that reality more than they believe reindeers and elves. Our children should know that reality more than Christmas trees and lights. And all of those, again, I say are okay because you're dealing with a mind that is still growing into life. But there are people who are 70 and they only see Santa Claus. The people who are 50 and they only see reindeers. The people who are 70 is 80 and all they see is just a season of families getting together, you know, celebrating this, this, this day. There are people who are even offended that I'm speaking the truth because they've believed the lie so long that it sounds so beautiful than the name that is above every name. But therein is your salvation. Therein is your freedom. This is eternal life that they might know the one true God and his only son, Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So Jesus with us, Jesus for us, Jesus in us, is the reason for this day, is the reason for this season. You know, I woke up and I put on carols in my house and I was singing my heart out. And the reason why I was singing was I thanked God because I knew what I was singing and who I was singing. More than the psalm, I knew the shepherd. So, as we celebrate this day you're going to eat food you're going to make merry reconcile and see friends and family and you know see people you've not seen long ago and praise god for all of that but once things stays fixed and sure that you need to know exactly why this season exists every year in human history so, you know decorate do all you do but most importantly Get your family together and have a thanksgiving prayer for the gift of Jesus Christ. Those of you that are in your homes, if you're watching me, I want to pray with you. If you as a family, wherever you are, you can join your hands right now. If you're alone and I can pray with you, that's still okay. If you're with a friend right now and you're watching this, uh, I just want us to take a minute and make a prayer to thank God for the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his life. We thank you for sending a savior to guarantee our eternal salvation. And now we know that they which believe in Christ shall live and not die. We thank you because we have eternal life through the propitiation of your sins, Jesus. We thank God the Father that he counted us worthy to know him. And our hearts prayer, even as I sense and we sense that you're closer to return than you have ever been before. May our hearts hunger for you. 
may we live to serve you and live for you. May we live to exalt your name in whatever we do and may we count all things but down for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ for whom we have count all things but lost that we might get him. Father, may we give ourselves for the sake of the kingdom and to respond to the love that so greatly was given to us expressed through the sacrifice of Jesus and that we will spend and be spent for you and that forever this testimony will live in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. If you're there and you've never given your life to Christ, this is the best day. And I give you opportunity right now to repeat this as after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood for my sins and was raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. If you made that prayer, you're born again. Please go on for an error dog uh, slash salvation. And then tell us your story. I want to help you understand what it means to be born again. I'll send you some to read. And we'll call you if we can. Uh, or you can call us on plus 256 Um, I believe that some of you have been healed tonight. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing. Those of you that are sick, heal. COVID cases, heal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I know that many miracles are happening right now because I'm releasing life on your families. I'm speaking reconciliation. We thank you, God, for this wonderful year. Your countenance will shine upon us. You will give us peace. Your blessing will pursue us in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus, kindly send me a testimony as well. I'm Fanero, the dog slash testimonies. Or you can call us on plus 256-200-999-405. I've also set aside uh, a platform for prayer uh, to pray for you. If you have a prayer request, we've put it on our website. Uh, on fanero.org slash prayer. You can send your prayer request there. You can actually go on, on, on Fanero uh, on that very platform and put your testimonies as well. There's a testimony um, uh, box there. But your prayer requests that you send through every morning, every afternoon, every hour, we see through them and we're praying for you. I pray for you. Um, it's also on the mobile app. When you go in the mobile, go on, um, on the part of About Us section and then click on prayer request and it will lead you to a page from which you can submit your prayer request or testimony. I'll still be glad um, to hear from you. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Silent night Holy night Holy God all is bright round your virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep.
podcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make